New York and on the new Hot 97 app. Ebro in the morning on Hot 97. Juice World, super talented young rapper who uh, his career was just taken off. He passed away suffering a seizure in Chicago's Midway Airport, according to TMZ. His flight from California landed early on Sunday morning, and after getting off, witnesses are saying that he suffered a seizure while walking through the airport. Mm. So, I mean, the details on it, it's pretty, pretty crazy, but they're saying that he was conscious when he, you know, when he was being transported by Chicago Fire, but he was pronounced dead a short time later at the hospital. This is a blower, a super blower. I was just having a conversation with someone Friday about how talented he was. We were talking, <clears throat> trying to tell someone else who's not in the loop about new artists. Right. I mean, like, you know who you should check for is Juice World. That guy can rap. That guy's special. Not only that, but even his music-making sensibilities, mm-hmm. phenomenal. Um, you know, and I think, you know, in the past when uh, these young artists, you know, like what happened to XXX or Lil Peep, um, I'm trying to think of some other people that were, you know, their brands were almost synonymous with the <clears throat> turmoil that was going on, whether it be drug abuse or what's going on in the streets or whatever. That or, was de- or depression. Or depression. And while he's got a hit song called Lucid Dreams, you know what I mean, which is definitely a dark song, um, and he's got a lot of material that is, uh, you know, dealing with, you know, dark places and, you know, whatever depression he was dealing with and things like that. Um, I don't think that was his whole brand. I don't think people saw him as that type of artist, as a negative energy. Like, most of the things I hear hear about him are always positive. People loved him, man. Man. I know that... um, I know that uh, Karen, our friend from Interscope, who has been promoting records... Since Tupac's first album. Since so. Tupac's first album, okay? Yeah. She's a veteran adult. Right. She loved Juice World. Like, she was like, when she's... when a couple, Six months ago, she was like, I really want to get him to come do mornings. He's on Flex. I want to get him to come up there. He's the sweetest kid. He's just the best kid. She like, she like was taking pictures with him. She just loved this kid. And musically, he was so interesting. He went on Westwood twice and freestyled for an hour. 60 minutes twice on Westwood where he just rap freestyling off the top for an hour. So to me, he he was so interesting in so many ways because you're right, he also had that song-making ability. And um, and his first album, you know, I even had some issues with, like, rock radio um, behind the scenes and people promoting, like, alternative music because his first album was very alternative. And this second album that dropped, there's there's things in here that I felt like should have got picked up by pop radio more. And he should have got embraced by that world a little bit more because he had some, there's definitely some rock sensibilities. And I said we got to deal with this Juice World thing. A, because I feel like it's not documented how frequently on this program we have called out artists, talked to artists, not played songs, that deal with just recklessly popping pills and lean and et cetera, et cetera. Now, I'm not going to say we are completely innocent. We're complicit. The music reflects what's going on out there, and a lot of times popular songs come along, and that's what everybody likes. And it's coded in the language, and I know it's there. But the opioid epidemic Mm. and lean... And all of these things that have become so pervasive in hip hop culture and just American yeah, was, culture, by the way, yeah. needs to be a continued discussion. Now, Rosenberg, you even said to me, you were like, man, we done talked about this so many times, but I don't, and we don't know if Juice World's seizure at the airport had anything to do with drugs. That has not been well, substantiated. So there's yet. that part. Yeah, we don't know 100% yet that's what it was, but based on his music and history, it's. Seems and like imagery and yeah, it's, it seems like a logical and, conclusion. And Laura, you said there were some tweets yeah, that there, people are pointing to. Right, there were some tweets that were floating around. Um, one guy was saying that he had conversations with Juice World about getting clean, you know. So that's why I, I'm assuming that it has something to do with drugs. But I don't know, guys. It's like these kids are abusing drugs, and it's to the point where it's so normal. I think that's why for us, it's like we've heard about it, we've listened to the stories, we hear it in the music over and over again. We just had little Pete passed away. Mac Miller. Mac Miller. It's not one thing, it's another. But it's serious. 
I think the only person to me who's had honest conversation with us is Schoolboy Q. When he came up here and was very, very open in, in our various interviews with him about getting on and off of lean. Well, look, French Montana is on, I read, a month-long bed rest right now. We don't know why French Montana has been put in the hospital or is on a month-long bed rest. But I, I know. And we all know from hearing his music and what he's represented in culture yes. that he's been abusing drugs and abusing his body and not sleeping well. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. We've seen it. Yeah. And I, I mean, we don't, again, in, in his case also, we don't know that's why he was in the hospital, right? But we came to the same conclusion, we right? We don't, but we also know the effects of these drugs, what they do to your body. So, I mean... I'm, the first time I heard that French was in the hospital, I, you know, my heart stopped because I was like, oh, my God, and that's the first thing that popped into my head. Unfortunately, us talking about it, I think it's our responsibility. I think we should do it and not against it. We, we have no effect on the kids who are interested in doing it. We are old and washed as can be, and it cannot, and, and, and squares, and it coming from us that drugs are bad is like the most obvious. That's why they're doing it in the first place. Half the reason they're doing it is because cats like us, of course, are like, no, why would you do that? That's insane. <laughs> so the question is, when are the people that are one generation above them, you know, going to be like, nah, straight up, this is this, just, and I don't even mean, it's not even about messaging. Don't do drugs, kids. It's about changing what's cool. Mm-hmm. When is there going to be a generation who's come up as being like, nah, I'm not on that? It it has, it can't come from preaching. It has to come from actual change, like People just don't want to do it anymore. Well, and we're, seeing, inter- the oh, side ahead, of, we're seeing the effects of it, though. We're losing them one by one. I know. I wouldn't be surprised if in some way that sickly makes it more of a thing. Who knows? 